In this episode of Real Chemistry, we're going to talk about solubility. Our basic goal here is to take a look at an ionic compound and decide if I put that into water, will it dissolve or not? So for example, if I take sodium chloride, which is just table salt, and put it into water, it dissolves. That's basically what the ocean is, is a giant solution of sodium chloride. So that's an example of an ionic compound, which is soluble, it dissolves. On the other hand, there's a lot of compounds that if I put them into my water, they'll just sink to the bottom and they won't dissolve. Those are insoluble. So we can divide all of our ionic compounds into two categories. Soluble, if they dissolve in water, and insoluble, if they don't dissolve in water. And what we want to do is, without going into the lab and testing it, we just want to be able to predict. Will this thing dissolve or not? And the way we do that is with solubility tables. So you see here two tables. In one table, we list the ions that are typically insoluble, that is, they don't dissolve. In the other table, we list the ions that are typically soluble, that is, they do dissolve. So for example, if I look at a compound and it contains hydroxide, this OH down here, it's typically insoluble because it's in the insoluble column, right? So it says typically insoluble. If, however, it's paired with any of these ions over under the exceptions column, if it's paired with sodium or potassium or ammonium, then it would be actually soluble. So that's the way these tables work. You look for the ion in either the typically soluble or typically insoluble table. So let's actually just take a look at potassium nitrate. This takes a few, a few practice tries to get a hang of, but once you get a hang of it, you'll find that it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so we have potassium nitrate here. So I can look for either of the ions in potassium nitrate, right? And the two ions there are potassium and nitrate, NO3 minus. And so here it's useful to be able to recognize your polyatomic ions. And so I can look for potassium. And if I look through the insoluble categories, I'll see that I don't see potassium or nitrate anywhere. So let's go ahead and take a look in the other table. I see in that first row, nitrate. I say, okay, so nitrate compounds are typically soluble. Let's see if there's any exceptions. In this case, no exceptions. That means any nitrate you ever see, anything paired with nitrate is always, always soluble. So that makes our potassium nitrate soluble. So that means if I go into the lab and I drop this guy in a beaker, it's going to dissolve. It's not just going to rest down to the bottom. And that's how we do this. We look in our insoluble and soluble charts to try to find the ions that we have in our compound. Let's do a few more examples. So here we have two different lead chlorides. We have lead 2 chloride and lead 3 chloride. And this actually, this problem shows that it's important to be able to not just identify that you have lead there, but also that you identify the charge of your lead. So here, what two ions are present in lead 2 chloride? Well, we have Pb and we have Cl. And we know chlorine is always negatively charged. And since there's two of them, that means that our lead must be lead 2 plus. And so now I go and I look through my table for lead or chlorine. First, we'll start with the insoluble chart. I don't see lead or chlorine there. I don't see lead or chlorine there. And then I go down through here. And eventually, all the way in the fourth row, ah, I see chlorine. So chlorine containing compounds are generally soluble. That's why they're in the solubility table, or the table that is typically soluble. Now I look, okay, but is it paired with one of the exception ions? And I go through the exception ions, it's not paired with silver, it's not paired with mercury, but it is paired with lead 2 plus. And so since it's in the exceptions column, that means that actually it's not soluble because chlorine, though typically soluble, is insoluble if paired with lead 2 plus. And that's, in fact, what it's paired with in this case. So here, this guy is insoluble. So our lead 2 plus chloride is insoluble. Now let's take a look at lead 3 chloride. Here, we again know that our chlorine ion is negative 1. But now, since we have three negative ones, three chlorines at negative 1 each, we know that our lead must be charged with a 3 plus. So again, we go back to our tables, and once again, we'll find chlorine in that same spot, which is generally soluble. I'll erase the notes on the exceptions. And so chlorine, generally soluble, let's see if it's paired with one of the exceptions. Well, it's not paired with silver plus, it's not paired with mercury two plus, and it's not paired with lead two plus. Even though it's paired with lead, the lead is positively three charged and not positively two charged. So lead three chloride is actually soluble because 
it's chlorine paired with lead 3 plus, not lead 2 plus. So this contrast shows you that it's important to actually be able to identify not just what ions you have present, but what their charge is also. So let's take a look at a few more examples, give you some more practice, and you'll feel more comfortable with this. So the very first compound we're going to take a look at is sodium hydroxide. And so this splits up into sodium plus and hydroxide minus. And what we're going to do is we're going to look through our solubility tables for either of those ions. And what we see if we look at the insoluble table is that hydroxides are typically insoluble. And so now what we want to do is we want to look and see is it paired with any of those exception ions. So hydroxide in this case is paired with sodium and we see right off the bat that sodium is actually an exception. So hydroxides are typically insoluble except if they're paired with sodium or potassium or ammonium, and ours is paired with sodium. So that means that sodium hydroxide is soluble. And I'm just going to abbreviate with an S and box that guy. So we know that sodium hydroxide is soluble. Let's take a look at our next compound, which is iron 3 hydroxide. So iron 3 hydroxide has two ions in it, OH minus. And since there's three of them, and they're each at negative one, we know that that means our iron must be plus three. All right, so we have iron three plus and hydroxide minus. Again, we're going to go to our solubility tables. And again, obviously, we see hydroxide right up here at the top of our insolubility list. And now we want to look, is iron three one of those ions that's an exception? And there's no iron three in the exceptions column. So what that means is, that hydroxides are typically insoluble, and it's not paired with an exception, so that means it's insoluble. So we're going to put an I, and we're going to box it. All right, now let's take a look at strontium carbonate. Strontium carbonate, two ions there, and the carbonate, we know, has a 2 minus charge, which means our strontium has a 2 plus charge. And we're again going to go ahead and look through our solubility tables, for strontium or carbonate. And in the second row of our insoluble list, we see carbonate right there. And so carbonates are typically insoluble. And now what we're gonna look at is see, is it paired with one of the exception ions? And right away, I see strontium is one of the exception ions. So though carbonate is typically insoluble, if it's paired with strontium, it's soluble because it's one of those exception ions. So strontium carbonate is soluble. All right, last example, silver bromide. All right, in this case, we know bromine is minus one, and that means that our silver must be plus one. So we have silver plus and bromine minus, and what we're gonna do again is go look through our tables to try to find either of those ions. And you don't see silver or bromine in our, insolubil in our insolubility table. And if you go ahead and take a look at the table of soluble ions, you don't see it in the first row or the second row, but way down here in the third row, you see it. And so bromine is typically soluble. Now let's see if it's paired with one of the exceptions. Well, right away you see silver plus is one of the exceptions. So silver plus being paired with bromine means that we have an insoluble compound. So typically bromine is soluble, but when it's paired with any of those exception ions, it's not, and that means that we have an insoluble compound. Now ask yourself, if I had silver bromide, and instead of one bromine, there was two bromines, that would be silver two bromide, would it be soluble or insoluble? And in that case, because it would be paired with silver two plus, which isn't an exception ion, it would actually be soluble. So you need to figure out what the charge is on your ions, and then you need to look through your list of insoluble ions and your list of soluble ions and check for any exceptions. So this is how we can determine if an ionic compound is going to be soluble or insoluble without actually going into the lab and testing it. If you still have any other questions, please leave them below. You can also subscribe to my channel to get updates about future real chemistry episodes.